All right, in this video, we're going to talk about depth maps in OpenCV using Python for stereo vision. So we're going to start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump right into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we can get two stereo images and get the depth map that we can see here up on top. So what is depth map? So sometimes you'll hear it called disparity map, and they mean the same thing. But what this des describes is the distance between each pixel between matching points from two stereo images. So if we actually look at each um, value here, this will tell us the disparity for the individual pixels, which will tell us that for this point in both images, that is the distance between the two pixels. So the disparity equation can be defined by x minus x prime, or the left and right image. And this is equal based off of some similar triangle geometry. Um, B, your baseline, which is the distance between your two cameras, times f divided by z, which is the z distance to your world point. And you can see this figure here that describes that geometry. So why do we need depth map? There's different things you might need it for, such as 3D reconstruction. You could take a depth map and convert it to a point cloud. You could do things with AR and things with depth estimation if you want to measure things for certain applications. So how does depth map work? Um, the idea is you do what's called a block matching. So you'll take a window here. I exaggerated the window, but you could have two windows and you may be searching along some epipolar line, for example. So you may find a search, keep sliding the window along this line, and then you could compute um, different metrics, such as the sum of absolute difference, sum of squared differences, or the normalized cross-correlation. And what you would do is find which one gives the best response, and that would be your potential matching point, which is very similar to the template matching video that I talked about. You could go check that out but it's a similar idea. So to make it a little bit better, there's another method which we call the semi-global matching. So it's also called SGM. Um, sometimes you'll call it SGBM, but most commonly you'll see it as SGM. That's the main thing. So the idea of that is it tries to minimize the energy function. Okay, So the energy function is defined here as a sum of C, so C right here is going to be the matching cost that we just talked about, and it's going to be a function of your pixel. And then you have two different sums. So you have a penalty based off of your disparity values. So if your disparity is um, equal to 1, you get penalized by something. And if your disparity is greater than 1, then you get penalized by P2. So this penalization factor controls the smoothness of your disparity map. And then in practice, to really get this energy or cost function, what we actually do is we will take 16 paths from all directions. And then we're going to try to find the path that produces the minimum cost. So you will have an equation that looks like this. So essentially, you do this for every pixel inside your image, and you will find some um, uh, you'll find a global minimum which will represent your disparity match. Okay, so there's a lot of math that goes behind this, but this is just a high level overview of what's happening. Okay, so let's jump right into the coding. Okay, so here we have a function. We're going to do our demo, um, demo view picks. So inside our demo view picks, we're going to call our depth map. Depth map, what this init function does is get, gonna get the root path and then get the left and right path and read in the left and right images from the path and store it, store the images as grayscale. Then from here, if the show image option is true, we're gonna go ahead and plot it. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so you can see our images here is showing up. So this is the left and right image of our motorcycle. Okay. So for our next function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, there's two main functions we're gonna test out. One is the block matching. So here the block matching, we're gonna compute, um, it's called our compute depth map BM. So what this function does is we define some um, n disparity factor. So 
Um, what we do here is we're going to call our stereo bm.create. So what this does is it creates a stereo bm object so that later we could compute the disparity map. So what this takes as an input is a number of disparities. So usually the number of disparities is going to be a multiple of 16. So that's why we multiply it by some factor and we can play around with this factor 6 to see which gives better results. And then we have a block size which uh, by default is 21, but we could play around with it. It should just be odd and more than one. And then here we have the disparity. So stereo.compute is going to actually return the disparity. So this is going to be an m by n numpy array, which is our disparity. And then we pass in the left and right image, which is an m by n numpy array as well. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, we should see our disparity map. Okay, so you can see here that it's all black. From just by looking at this, I know it's not good. And um, typically what you expect from a good disparity map is you want to see there's a nice gradient from forward to back. And typically you would have um, the points that's further away would have less disparity and the points closer away would have more disparity. Because you can imagine um, points further away tend to look like they're at the same location. Whereas points closer away, there's more movement um, between the points. Um, if it's closer to the camera. And you can see if I hover over this, you see some negative sixing values um, down at the bottom in your browser. So if I move this, you can see a little bit better. You can see, if you focus down here, you can see the actual values that um, these pixels are. You can see this negative 16, so that's not very good. And then back here, you can see some values as like 800. So I would say this, this is not too good. Um, but if I play with the SGBM, it's going to give us better results, which we'll see in a bit. But let's go ahead and adjust this factor here to see what happens. So if, if I make this 12, let's see what happens. So you can see that some of the black part disappears. Um, the wheel part becomes wider, so that's a good sign. But still, I would say overall, this is not a very good disparity map. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at our other function. So our other function uses the SGM. In OpenCV, they call it SGBM. So this has a lot more uh, parameters we could play with. So um, we're going to call the next function in the next step here. So here, what this does is we have um, window size, which we um, declare here. And then we have a min disparity. We have a n disparity factor. So we could play around with that. We have a num number of disparity, which we'll define as 16 times the n disparity factor minus the minimum. So when we create our SGBM uh, object, we could pass in all of these parameters. We have the min disparity, the number of disparity, the block size, which is our window size, our P1, P2, which is our penalty factors, and the heuristics. These are just some values that people have found to be good, so we're going to leave that. Typically, tuning these are pretty hard, so I'm not going to tune it in this um, demo here. What I do find is that tuning this value changes it a lot, so we'll play around with that. So here we have some max difference. It takes it as an int. Um, we're going to set that to 1. We have a uniqueness ratio here. So what this does is a margin in percentage by which the best computer cost value should be should win the second best value. Um, that we're going to... I played around to be 15, speckle window size of 0, the speckle range. So this is just controlling max size of the smooth disparity region. So based off of the how much noise there is, you could play around with that. And then the speckle range, which is the maximum disparity variation within the specified window. And then you have the pre-filtered cap. So that's six, set as 63. And then here. Here we have, so pre-filter cap, truncates disparity value falling outside of this range. And then the mode that we're going to be using, there's a couple of different options. So the mode we have, um, here we have the cv.stereo.sgbm mode sgbm. And then you have the mode hh, mode the three-way, hh4, and the quarter. So there's just kind of some optimization methods um, if a, there's like a trade-off between how fast and how good the results are. So right here we're playing with the three-way method. So let's go ahead and choose something um, like seven for now and see how that looks. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll see what that looks like. So you can see that this is the results here. 
You can see it's very fuzzy. Um, it's not smooth like I prefer. So you know that this is not a very good depth map. And if I go ahead and change this to 14, which I found to be pretty good, and if I run it, so because there's more disparities, it will take longer. But you can see this is more or less something I would expect. So you can see that um, these valleys here in the back are darker, the valleys in the front are brighter, and it's ranging, has a decent range from forward to back. So I would say this is a pretty decent depth map. And you can see if I hover over it, um, it's going to display the, the values for the disparity. So again, if you pay attention to the corner down here, you can see the disparity values here. It's like 176. In the back, it's like 70s. The darker region is like 40s and so on. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.